Hello there, welcome to my studio. My name is Matthew Palmer and today I want to talk about these new brushes called the Matthew Palmer Blending Blade. Now there's two brushes, there's the large and the small. If we take a look at the large one we can see this wonderful angled head, it's got this beautiful point to this. Now one side is longer than the other, that is designed for a reason which we'll talk about very shortly. The hair is a unique hair that we've developed that is extremely uh, stiff that allows you to reactivate paint and soften paint away very easily. Blending is always an interesting thing. It's the number one problem. How do you blend paint away? Well, I want to show you some examples of the blending blade. So the biggest problem without question when I teach watercolors and I watch people doing work is how do they blend paint? So a normal process is you put the paint on and then you blend this away. This is useful for shadows and all sorts of situations. But a common problem is, is that people don't understand necessarily the blending process and what they end up with is a thin line at the top. Now I've been blending paint away for years and notice I'm dragging the colour that a little bit too far but it's also left this thin line. Another problem is people putting the paint on and then forgetting about it or maybe working a bit more relaxed and steady which is perfectly acceptable for watercolours and then by the time you come to blend it the paint's too dry. Now that's using a standard round brush but if I bring in the blending blade and do the same process so I'll put some natural grey being the perfect shadow colour. Now I can paint fine lines if I want to as well with this. Now I can be pretty relaxed about doing this, I can take my time with it if I clean the brush and I always say just give it a bit of a tap on tissue it helps. I can use this blending blade and the stiff hairs make blending this paint away very very easily, I can blend it away at the ends and at the sides, get more water if I need to, give it a couple of taps on the tissue and look how simple that paint is blending away. I would say it's the number one problem people have. So blending blades make blending paint easier and if I come back to that first piece that I did a few moments ago I can simply go back into this and I can blend it away as smooth as cream. It really is a nice thing to use. So that's great and that works brilliantly. But when we first designed the brushes or when I first designed the brushes I was wanting a brush that would make painting skies easier. Now this is the reason we've gone for the angled head because clouds, my kind of clouds that I like to paint, the soft fluffy clouds, are challenging and you've got to do them at the same time as the paper is wet, which is not easy when you're working in a large group in a workshop environment and people do struggle to do this, warm days, that kind of thing. So normally you put the sky on and you'd be very quickly using a round brush of something like this sort of size here and going straight into the clouds. But if I just move this to one side, oh actually what we'll do is we'll get a, a fresh sheet of watercolour paper here and pop that on for you. And I want to paint a sky. I want to paint a sky. So most skies work best wet into wet. So we're going to put some water on here. So this is just using the large blending blade. Put the water on. We'll do a a mini sky let's say. Now if I give this a wobble we can see the water there. Now a wobble, good word. We'll take some colours. This is light skin tone, beautiful for the skies. Let's pop that around the base here. Now I can put these colours on very very freely and this is the great thing about a blending blade. I'm also going to take some, um, I'll tell you what, let's take some natural violet. We can be pretty relaxed about what colours we use here. This one being natural violet. We'll put a line of violet across the top. Perfect. This is a very different way to the way you'd normally paint the sky. What I'm going to do then is I want to take another colour. And I wonder whether I should bring some yellow into this. Now I've got a light yellow here, natural yellow light. I'll take some of that. We'll pop that in the middle. So we've got almost a stripe, three coloured stripes. Now normally you'd paint a sky, you'd have to be conscious of blending, crossing the brush over. But with a blending blade you don't have to worry about that. I'll show you, if I clean the brush, get all the colour out of it, this is the large brush I'm using here, get the tissue, take off the excess, so the brush is damp, not necessarily dry, I can now take as much time, even if this is dry, and that's an important thing, even if it's dry, take my time and I can cross the brush, mix in the colours, can you see the yellow, 
that slight cross I can really take my time and create some beautiful beautiful gorgeous sky effects it works an absolute treat and it's a great way of working back in once paint has gone on and mixing colors and dragging them so another problem I mentioned was painting clouds and fluffy clouds soft clouds something that we see of course all the time but people do have a problem with this and I've been teaching workshops for well over 20 years up and down the country the UK and people have an issue painting in clouds the main problem is is getting them in while this is still wet because you want a soft edge and wet paint and paper is perfect but this is almost dry I'm talking to you I'm purposely leaving this to dry to show you the properties of the brush but another interesting thing that we can do is a cloud sometimes in fact quite often has more than one color in it especially for an evening sky like this so how would we paint a multicolored cloud once the paper is almost dry pretty much impossible to do with normal paint brushes but with a blending blade you can do this I'll show you I clean the brush I'm just gonna give it a bit of a tap on tissue I don't want it saturated I want to take a couple of colors here so on one side of the brush now this is important because we've got the angle this is why the angle is is is, is present we're going to take some light skin tone that's the same one that we just used a few moments ago for doing this here now it's staying put that's great now on the other side of the brush i want to take some gray because we've got a bit of a sunset going off here so if we take some natural gray now notice how the colors are staying on the brush can we see that we can see that the colors are staying put we've got these light skin we've got the gray so and, and we can be quite heavy with the paint as well I mean that's quite a thick colour now literally I'm just going to move that to one side pop this in in center this is where this angle head comes in the special bristle holds the colour in place beautiful for multicolored effects this is pretty much dry I can I'll tell you that straight away now I can lay this flat and twist look at that gorgeous multicolored cloud think of the sunset effect and it's 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 effortless just to twist across I'm going to get some more colour, I'm going to reload it, I'm going to put some more grey on and some more skin, so I'm just taking more of the same and I'll show you the brush you can see you've got the grey and the skin there I'll do another cloud, lay it flat and just twist I love how you can have multicoloured effects now if you look at a sunset sky what you see is warm colours silhouetted clouds against the evening sun now I've painted the start of the clouds. Now at the minute, this is what you don't want to happen with a normal sky, normal paintbrush. The background's dry, which means we've not got a soft edge, we've got a crisp edge, it's not looking very sky-like. So how can we do it? Well, this brush lets you do this. Even if you put the background wash and left it to the next day, you can simply come back, do the clouds and work and make the clouds look soft. What we do is we clean the brush we've got the water here we'll clean the brush we're going to use a piece of tissue and we're going to squeeze it so it's pretty much dry now I want to use this brush first of all the blending properties blending blade do some horizontal lines below so I'm, because it's such a stiff bristle it's a brand new bristle this folks it allows me to soften I can soften the ends as well as well so I'm I'm back to using the point again and twisting and blending Here's a good thing to try. Because it's a stiff bristle, you can create some wonderful effects. We can drag some color down. Can you see the rain coming down? Or beams, distant rain or light beams, whatever you think. How beautiful is that? Can you imagine putting that in your watercolors? Do some over here as well. So a great way of softening away the bottom. If I clean the brush again, just to get the paint off, and then if I come to the tops of the clouds and I'm literally laying the brush almost flat again to the paper and twisting and look how beautifully it's creating a soft edge just like you would want to see in a sky and just like you would normally get if you was working wet into wet but because you're picking paint up you need to clean it and give it a squeeze through a tissue back onto your paper and literally just continuing to twist the brush creating the soft feathery effect and you can do this as much or as little as you need to even if this background was completely dry 
and the clouds for that matter, you could just rework into them without causing any chaos to the background. It's not lifting the background off. I can soften this away here a little bit. I'll put some more beams or some rain coming down. It just it just makes a beautiful sky, it really does it, it. It changes in front of your eyes. We can continue to clean it, squeeze through the tissue here and soften away any hard edges. The brush makes a, a smooth job of this. It's a beautiful thing, folks, it really is. Gorgeous. And I'm sure you'll agree that's made a wonderful watercolour evening sky effect. Imagine putting some mountains here, that kind of thing. Now another beautiful uh, effect with blending blades is to use the multicolour properties. So you start to think of things like rainbows. Let's paint a rainbow, famously known to be one of the most difficult things to paint. How do you get that beautiful softness of the different colours? Very hard thing to achieve while well, the blending blade Blending blades are the perfect tools. You could do small and of course large. I'll use the large brush here for the for the rainbow. What I want to do is I want to start by painting a little sky. Oh, actually, something what will make this even more interesting is at the base of the sky. Take some masking tape, remove the excess stickiness, and pop this where the sky and landscape meet. That's quite an important thing to do, and you'll see why. Let's now use water. And let's wet the area of sky like you'd normally do. Because it being the blending blade, the water goes on fairly cleanly. Not a huge amount, but a couple of coats of water would work spot on for this. Excellent. And let's paint in a clean background sky. Let's start off with something like a pale skin tone here. This is the colour that we used in the previous sunset. A little bit paler though, we don't want it to be too heavy. Painting this right down to the masking tape there, that being light skin tone. Clean the brush and now we'll take some natural blue right across the top of the sky. A nice clean non-granulating blue that works lovely in any sky. You can bring this down, with it being a blending blade it blends in as smooth as cream. So a nice straightforward watercolour sky there. Dragging the colours together. Now if there's a rainbow there's got to be some darkness around. So we're going to take some natural grey. Not a huge amount. It's worth tapping the excess off. I've got the same piece of tissue that I used on the previous demo. And I'm just going to use the blending blade through the clouds. So hold it almost flat to your paper and twist. And because the paper's still wet, it's, it's giving me the soft edge without having to worry. But if it wasn't doing that, remember, as with the previous demonstration with the sunset, you can go back in and soften your clouds. So we're just going to pop in a few clouds hanging around here. And it just makes clouds so easy, this brush, it really does. It should be called the sky painting brush. Pop another one just here as well. Starting to dry there. Clean the brush, give it a few wipes on the tissue so it's almost dry. And then just spend a few moments just blending the ends of the clouds away and the bottoms a little bit softer. But you can see we've created a beautiful a beautiful sky in seconds with the blending blade. This is the large one I'm using, but of course you could use the small one just as well. So let's talk about rainbows. Now what we'll do is we'll get water on the brush, but not a huge amount. So it's damp, but not saturated. The paper is still damp though. Let's take some colors, rainbow colors. We're gonna have some blue. So I'll take some blue. Now I'm loading the brush up. Can you see the blue on the one side? In the center, we'll take some red. This one being natural red here. There's the red. And then on the opposite side, we'll take some yellow. So what we've got here is a brush. It's got three colours on blue, red and yellow. See the brush is holding it in place. Now working up from the masking tape, this is why the masking tape was present for this. We're going to basically lay it flat here. In fact, we'll take it off the side. So practice the curve and literally sweep it in to the end of your picture. How beautiful is that? And how simple was it as well? Clean the brush out, 
wipe it on the tissue so it's almost dry and obviously that's the end of the paper anyway but what you can do if you want if you was doing a vignette like this you could quite easily just use the blending blade for what it's designed for just to soften it but that oh man seriously a beautiful effect you can go in you can you can spend a few moments refining the rainbow making the colors weaker or softer but it just works so well it's lovely to see um, as another interesting thing you can do with the brush as well, we can actually use the brush for creating interesting effects, let's say. So let's take some of the blue again. There it is, put it in the middle. Doesn't matter where you put it, put it on the end with the yellow and on the red. Now obviously that is great for doing the, the rainbow effect, as we saw. These wonderful rainbow paint, but if we tap the brush, you can create kites flying in the sky, um, which is great for a beach scene. Now, if I take a fine brush, something like a, branch, a Matthew Palmer branching detail brush, and take a bit of grey or something, of course it's quite easy to bring in a, a tail, and of course a little, bit of, a little bit of string coming down to the beach, and then with the smaller, blending blade we could take some red some yellow some blue and we can pop in some little interesting trails on the kite so you know you can have so much fun with this brush it's not just about painting skies or blending paint away let's call these brushes the blending blades that also do a great job of sky techniques what a beautiful rainbow hope you enjoyed that demonstration folks 